This is the charming Yorkshire village of Hayfield, situated in the centre of Derbyshire's beautiful Peak District. You won't find any riffraff here. Oh, and look at all those little ducks there going quack 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 quack. Oh, and what about all those little lambs there as well going? I can't think of anywhere else in the world I would rather be. Except for maybe pulling Liz McDonald's thong down with my teeth on a patch of wasteland behind a gasworks. After 40 minutes of travelling through the sausage roll infested streets of Stockport, followed by a depressing jaunt through the solar suburban hellhole that is Marple, I finally arrive in Hayfield, and desperately needing a wee. Oh look, it's a public toilet. Public toilets often frighten and fascinate me with equal measure, with their cold wet tiling, and the smells of urine, faeces, and occasionally, semen along with the nervous tension of knowing that the man of your dreams could walk in at any moment. Oh, Armitage Shanks. Where would we be without you? Now that that bit of business is taken care of, I can finally begin my tour of Hayfield, whilst confidently declaring that British toilets are the best in the world. And that makes me feel good. If anyone from television is watching this and actually enjoys what I do, then why not offer me my own television series? As I believe that my adventures would make the perfect programme before an episode of, say, The Yorkshire Vet, perhaps. The people have a right to good television, whereas others, frankly, deserve what they get. I'm wearing sturdy footwear today, which will prove essential once I get down and dirty and deep into the sodden barren land that is Hayfield's open countryside. And I'm already wet with excitement. That last bit was a euphemism for premature ejaculation, which, oddly enough, I've never actually suffered from. I'm now looking for the cottage that was the birthplace of one of Hayfield's most notable residents. And that notable resident was actor Arthur Lowe, better known for his role of Captain Mannering in the BBC sitcom It Ain't Half Hot Mum. The cottage now has its own blue plaque, which attracts several visitors each year. Arthalo sadly died back in 2000, after his Norton antivirus software had crashed. He was only 52 years old. As I head up Snake Path, it's not long before I'm exposed to the tranquility of Yorkshire's Derbyshire countryside. And the views here are amazing. It's days like these that make me feel truly blessed to be unemployed. I'm now heading towards Kinder Reservoir, where my tour will sadly end. But, as I make my way across this barren land, I soon arrive at some rocks, and it is these rocks that serve as the clue to unveiling the history behind one of Hayfield's most puzzling and more mysterious tragedies.
This vast and expansive hill is the infamous Moorland Plateau, Kinder Scout. Around 40 walkers die here each year tackling it, and a further 20 are reported missing and never to be seen again. Do you remember those rocks we passed earlier that hinted at one of Hayfield's most puzzling and more mysterious tragedies? On Valentine's Day in 1900, a party of schoolgirls from the Appleyard College picnicked on Kinder Scout. Several members of the party went missing that day and were never seen again. The disappearance of the schoolgirls remains a mystery to this day. The story later formed the basis of Australian author Joan Lindsay's 1967 novel, Picnic at Hanging Rock, which was later adapted for the big screen in 1975 by New Zealand director Werner Herzog. The film became an international hit, though sadly, the success of the novel and film overshadowed what really happened on Kinder Scout that day. The following monologue contains my final words to my mother. Mum, I'm sorry for all the distress that this will cause you, but the decision to end my life was not an easy one, as life for me never quite came up to scratch, and come the finish, I was homeless and jobless, and with literally only pennies to my name. <laughs> I'll always appreciate what you did for me, as I... I, 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 I couldn't have wished for a better mother, and it goes without saying that I loved you to the very end. Anyway, take care of yourself, stay strong, and tell that bigoted old twat of a father of mine that he was right. <laughs> I didn't amount to much in the end, but, but neither did he, and I would never put a child through what he put me through. Goodbye.